Yo, yo, it's ODB, our lifestyle podcast. Appreciate everyone checking back with us here with all of these video uploads. Search OLP via your favorite podcast app. Come and be down with OLP. We are a mini truck and inspired podcast, but we cover a lot of topics. Let's jump right in. This is March of 93. It's issue number 24 of Mini Trucking Magazine. Seven features. Um, you got Sharks that shot the cover, Doug Starbucks, um, amazing truck. Really good time in our scene, and uh, let's go ahead and go while we got some daylight. So, kind of a rare issue. I don't see it come up as much. You got a model. You see the Starbucks on the front license plate. March 9-3. V8 powered Chevy Love. Showtime finale. Resolutions 9-3. A really, really solid issue. Still bi-monthly. And we're making our way through these issues. So let, again, without further ado, let's jump right in. Got a new ad there. Kind of a typical old school ad. It's pretty cool to go back and look at some of the prices, as I mentioned in the past, and be like, damn. If I had the job, you know, the jobs that we have now, or, you know, we have a little bit more money than we probably did when we were younger. And it's like, man, if we could go back to those retro prices. You got the topless Nissan. Pretty cool table of contents here. Kind of showing you everything in this one. And uh, what I always like to look at. Oh, here's East meets West. Truck and Showtime 92 hits Michigan. California Enforce, Rezo 93. But then here it gives you the insight. So this month's cover is Doug Starbucks S10 Blazer in the booth with the Sandra Wild. And then you see the spectacle was captured on film by Sharks. I think Sharks has taught my head 20. He was credited with 29 covers. Um, obviously a lot of features and stuff like that. But um, kind of interesting to, to kind of break that down. And, and we'll do more breakdown as we go through this year on OLP. So editorial from Sharks says there's a sign post up ahead and it reads 93 summer show season so as you would expect you know the editorials just like today um although the magazines are done a month or two in advance you know they kind of try to tie into uh the particular part of the year that we're in check the van out that topper dough I keep trying to get Josh Ellis to put one of those on his. Um, that's right there, Josh. That's what you need, dog. On the looks that on the look that kills. But um, that's also what I do. Um, I'm fortunate to write an editorial each month for street trucks. I would have never thought, all these years later, um, 21, 22 years later, that I'd be able to have that opportunity. And thanks to Chris and Nicole for that opportunity. So with each one that I write, I try to tie it into that particular period of the year so clarion tape deck go check out ebay sometime on some of the old tape decks and cd players and stuff it's pretty cool a little trip down memory lane john saps izuzu from burleson texas at the phone though how many points is that at a Bill Cox show? All my uh, my kinfolk from the South, they know all about Bill Cox shows. When, uh, when I had um, dinner with Greg Miller, I think it was about a year ago, we were headed to Lone Star Throwdown. We stopped, and um, I think that was the time when he started telling me about the history of the Bill Cox shows. He actually worked back with them. It was called Whitley. And in one of these mini trucking magazines, I found an old um, uh, flyer for a Whitley show. So here you go. This was kind of hinted on the cover, Exotic Haze. Really old, old school, in my opinion, on this one. You know, kind of almost something that you would think out of, like, out of the 70s. But uh, you can't... 
uh, avoid saying like all the work that went into this thing. Maybe not my favorite style, but uh, definitely feature worthy, super badass truck. Uh, Courtney Hollowell, rest in peace, shot it. And this one was out of Santa Rosa Cali, a 79 Chevy Love. When you look at um, every issue and you look at all of the trucks and the years that were featured, um, which we'll talk about this throughout the year, what truck was on, you know, what year truck was featured the most on the cover and things like that. Um, there's not as many uh, 60s and 70s trucks. We'll talk about the oldest truck featured on the cover and things like that as we go through the year. We'll kind of do a, a data dump, if you will, of statistics. So Pony Express, Real Clean Ranger, 88. Check out the motor. Recently posted a couple uh, Ford Rangers on our social media uh, via OLP, our lifestyle podcast. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and, uh, oops, skip to page, and via Instagram. Pretty awesome stuff. Really looking forward to the show season coming back and hopefully in this pandemic situation, it um it'll be a better year you know we're already unfortunately seeing casualties of shows obviously the pandemic has has impacted some businesses and some states more and you know different age demographics but i know forbidden fantasy they're um, one of the first ones to fall victim of covid for this year so why it's strange and there were a couple of guys that wrote under that alias, but um, I want to talk about that in the future on the podcast. We've got some some guests lined up that could kind of shed some more light on that. But I think um, Jeff at Devious Customs has reminded me, my buddy Jeff, he's like, what the hell is that, right? Jeff has reminded me that Clint Walker also – uh, wrote under that moniker. Now, I don't know who officially started it, but we all know Courtney Hollowell, for the most part, is the one that we all think of. I don't know if Courtney did the majority of it, and then when he left the magazine, did Clint pick up? Um, I know that the White Strange name also showed up in Street Trucks a couple of times when I was kind of going back looking at those issues. So it'll be interesting to talk about that. Many of us know... Um, you know, that's, that's synonymous with this magazine going back in the day. So again, you see Shartsis, uh, this is Star's truck. Pretty cool feature, you know, just there in the grass. Real clean. It was Bonsai. And going from memory, that might've been their first cover on mini trucking. I, I haven't really highlighted the clubs a lot when I'm going through these, but I have that all broken down to, you know, which, which club was on the cover of which month and year and things like that. And, um, the first NC truck that was on the cover was the Gendro truck. And, um, I posted, I, I wish I had more time to post, but a mini truck in HQ on Instagram I'm going to try to post a lot more stats there and kind of cross promote with OLP. That's also my page, our page. And um, I'll highlight some of that. When I think when I posted that Gendro cover, that famous truck, I mentioned a bunch of stats about it. And he even chimed in. He's like, man, thanks for the, thanks for all of that. It's like, hey, man, it's what we do. The OG Gendro and SoCal. We got to get them on. We talked to him a few years ago about coming on, and he was down. So East meets West. You kind of saw that in the table of contents. Killer truck here. All for show. Toppers were all the rage. Check out the mirrors on that dime. Get a Ranger, another S10. And then um, this was cool. Uh, Pat's truck, which was just on the cover, it obviously um, was a huge hit. And you see right there, Bakersfield, California. 
There's Pat's truck. We've had him on the podcast. He's got the truck and tag on it, which is pretty cool. I'm, I'm guessing he got that at the photo shoot. I think it was on there. I couldn't tell if it was if it was edited into the feature uh, on the last cover for the main center spread, or if um, if he actually had it on the truck in the cover shoot. Talk about extended, extended, extended cab. Not my favorite mod, but uh, obviously magazine worthy. We went to Indy Truck Bash like 0203. We would see trucks up there that um, that had the shaved extended cab windows. That's one of my least favorite mods. Orion. You see Pat's truck here. Pat Nicolina's 89 double dipped bad boy super duper triple throwdown on the cover of Mini Truck in last month. What an era. Here you see Shartz's truck. I mentioned that in the last one. Man, that thing was on um, really a couple, if I remember correctly, a couple of covers because I think it was on Auto Sound and Security. And obviously it was on a truck and cover. Uh, at the Spark Show, I think 2019, uh, one of the homies that we're going to have on the podcast soon, he had um, a version of that truck and cover with Shartz's truck, but it was all in Japanese writing. And it made me think I had never seen a truck and magazine that was like a Japanese version. I don't know if anybody has any details on that. If they did that for just a couple of issues to like show some love to, you know, the other side of the world. Or if trucking did that routinely or I don't know. But I was kind of blown away. It was like a perfect copy of it. And of course it had Shartz's Ranger. That was that issue. Street Terror, kind of doing some motor mods. Here's Worthless. So lifted trucks were all the rage. Uh, from the 80s really into the 90s. You don't see as many of these at shows, but a lot of work goes into these. Love the colors, love the, the topper and everything that kind of went along with it. And everybody's out and about today. It's a real nice day in Florida. Here at the uh, compound. Pipe Dream. Tech article. Here you got the ad for Rezo. 93. Oh, excuse me. Every time I see that artwork, I think Rezo. Spring Splash. It's right in front of my face. When I saw this, I immediately knew uh, that's not Rezo. But, um... La Paz County Park, many of the West Coast, including Ruben and all of our homies out there, they know that park really well. Actually, in 94 is when that famous um, multi-truck cover, the group shot that Courtney shot. It happened uh, one year after this. And we posted it on the 25th anniversary, which would have been 2019. And we tagged, I don't know how many people, maybe 10 or 12 people that were on the cover. And I think if you, it might be the hashtag spring splash 1994 might be how we curate that one. I'm trying to go from memory, but, um, super sick truck here cruising low, but, um, that was an epic show. And, uh, I mean, you had everything from low Bigo on the cover and I mean, I'm still figuring you're, you know, still having people go, Hey, I'm in that photo. I'm right here. I'm the guy waving. I'm this, I'm that. It's pretty awesome. And we try to go back and tag anyone that's um you know i know i've talked to ruben and things like that and you know many of us that's one of our favorite covers because i think it really just captures the moment it's definitely my favorite group cover i think i may have said at the last issue um the one with pat nichols truck just i, I don't know what it is it, it's one that many of us just love it's just a great era Awesome truck, great guy. Roadster style. I also have that Instagram, Live Life Topless. I've got too many Instagrams. 
But uh, this is that's the type of content I would post there. Of course, it's got the top. But uh, nothing like a topless mini. And really, in the late 80s into the 90s, man, they were popular. Josh Ellis obviously has the Roadster truck. And, you know, you got to have an enclosed trailer for that stuff. Because, you, you know, you hit a show and... Uh, if it starts raining and whatnot, you got to put the truck up for sure, which is not a big deal, but uh, it's definitely dedication. We've seen the uh, Trucks Arosa crew. I talked to uh, Mark the other day. He's got one of the old school Trucks Arosa trucks. Great guy, and you know some of those guys like Madu and stuff. They've driven hundreds and hundreds of miles, and when it starts raining, if they don't have the top, they're like, Madu just says, "Just keep on trucking, man. What are you gonna do?" Zero F's given. A lot of passion out there. And uh, we try to bring that to everyone via OLP, our lifestyle podcast. So here's Showtime 9.3. So trucking. You saw some of the ads and the other issues. You get the entry form right there. What better way to advertise your show in your own publications? Free advertisement. And this one's pretty awesome here. You got Shartsis, Project Low Body, a really kick-ass Nissan. Hard body, topless, you got a topper. Jay Warner, you guys will know that name. Looking into the future of this street nasty Nissan hard body, pretty badass. So you got the Sprint ad, classic. Saw this one in the last one. So this is back when they would, um, if they could, especially for these huge shows, they would post who would win, who won the different awards. And that was probably an awesome way, you know, imagine if you had won an award at a show and you weren't already subscribed or whatnot, you know, you would want to run out and buy this magazine because your name was in it. Potentially, right? Just another way for them to really kind of cross promote and uh, hopefully increase the sales of said publication. So again, you see a pretty nice copy here overall. Issue number 24, March 93, springtime, killer cover, Sharks has killed it. He did a great job for the magazine and really contributed a lot. So thanks again for coming by OLP. Don't forget to follow us via your favorite podcast app. If you've never listened to a podcast, go out there. Many of you have an iPhone the pre-installed podcast app, the purple icon, search OLP. If you've got an Android, you've got plenty of options, Google Podcasts, but uh, probably a fan favorite is Podbean. You can uh, download that app, sign up for a free account, and then that's who hosts our podcast. Whether you're on Android or iPhone, you can go all the way back to the beginning if you use the Podbean app. Of course, you got Pandora and so many other options as well, including Spotify, which is a great option if you just want to stream it. It doesn't take up any space on your phone, like with Apple Podcasts, where it downloads it. So, ODB, stay on the rise, and thank you for all the support. Yachia. Peace.